Um, we'll um, discuss this afternoon some aspects of, um, of the use and the role of um, antimicrobials, mainly topical antimicrobials in chronic wound healing. Um, yes. First, I would like to um, underline that um, a lot in wound healing is not or not yet evidence-based, not yet objective knowledge. And we cannot afford today um, to take um, into consideration only what is really um, evidence-based as um, regards to uh, therapies and statements. There is um, too little evidence because there is a lack, as you can see, a lack of consistency in reporting standards. Um, trials have only a very small number of patients involved. Um, there is, it's very difficult to compare two wounds. There's no consistency in critical aspects of um, wound care. Um, differences in, in vascular deficiencies and vascular parameters will greatly influence wound healing. It's difficult to standardize, and as a consequence, um, a great deal of uh, what we do in, in wound care results from personal clinical experience, subject-oriented and therefore not evidence-based. Nevertheless, it's today the best we can do. What has been established in um, wound management is um, that in order to um, get a chronic wound, and a chronic wound is a wound that is open for more than six weeks, in order to get this chronic wound healed, there are three important aspects um, the first one is to restore microbial balance, and we'll mainly talk about this. And the second one is to keep a wound environment moist. And the third one is to keep it clean, to uh, um, divide the wound continuously. Microbial balance, then. Uh, you all know that um, uh, microbial species may establish... Um, the states of um, uh, described as contamination, colonization, or critical colonization, and eventually infection. Which one or what will follow depends on the uh, interplay among host, wounds, and microbial factors. And although no open wound will be sterile, not all wounds have the same range and number of species. Bacterial counts in surgical wounds, for example, will be relatively low compared to traumatic wounds with um, debris or necrotic tissue and chronic wounds on the other end may have high amounts of bacteria without causing clinical infection. Now, it is generally accepted also that all chronic wounds that heal will heal um, in at least a colonized state. In other words, no wound is sterile. And not all colonized wounds will, by necessity, become infected. Whether infection follows depends, as I said, on this interplay between the wound itself, the host, and the microbial parameters, which will be the type of bacteria, the number of bacteria, with respect of wounds, it's of course size of the wound, position of the wound, how long the wound is open, uh, local underlying perfusion, and whether there is foreign tissue or a scar present. And the host, this is clear, this is this um, immune competency that will decide or help to decide whether wounds, whether, whether wounds get infected or not. Once this wound gets infected, once a clinical infection gets established, wound healing will delay. Um, there is not a consensus on the uh, impact of specific microorganisms on the healing process, but that it delays is generally accepted. And why? Because bacterial um, bacteria will express several, um, uh, several factors they will increase protease concentrations in the wound that will break down extracellular tissue. White cell function will be impaired. Interleukina TNF-alpha, 
and uh, MMPs will be increased, all parameters of chronic inflammation. Microorganisms will of course consume nutrients and oxygen, both needed for wound repair. Fibroblast production will decrease, collagen will disorganize, scar tissue will be formed eventually. Um, biofilm is an increasingly important issue. Bacteria will be protected once they get into the biofilm, protected from the action of antibiotics and antiseptics. And specific bacteria like Streptococcus may directly, or Pseudomonas may directly delay um, wound healing. Once clinical infection is established, what do we do? Well, first of all, we keep the wounds clean. Microorganisms, bacteria, will adhere to necrotic tissue or dead cells, so we have to remove them. We keep the wounds moist because host defense mechanisms will only work properly if in a moist environment. But what then? What you see here is a, um, an overview of the uh, problems with application or, of antimicrobial agents. We can do two things then. We can apply them systemically, oral or systemically in general, or we can apply them topically. But there is no ideal solution. Let's start with systemical. Most of these wounds have an underlying ischemic pathology. This means that the amount of blood that will get to the underlying tissue is very limited. Now, if you administer antibiotics systemically, but the blood does not get to your wound, your antibiotic does not get to your wound, and it will never be able to kill the bacteria in the underlying tissue. Infected in bacteria that are responsible for infection, they need to have invaded the underlying tissue. In other words, if you apply an antimicrobial agent topically, externally, you will kill the green bacteria, but the green bacteria are basically outside your body and not responsible for the infection. You don't kill the right bacteria. Topical antimicrobials will never invade or, or, in, in, um, or penetrate in a sufficient amount into the underlying tissue to kill these red bacteria. And it's these ones that we, we need to kill to, um, to treat the infection. So it's a problem. From the outside, we never get to the bacteria. We kill the bacteria on the wound bed outside the body, but not the ones inside, the ones inside responsible for infection. If we apply uh, antimicrobial agents systemically, most of these wounds, the blood flow to these wounds is insufficient to get these antimicrobial agents in sufficient amount to the underlying tissue and to these bacteria again. And we don't even mention um, biofilm uh, formation. We don't even mention resistant uh, strains which can complicate the matter. It's a fairly difficult situation once you enter into a clinically established infected wound. The best is to um, prevent it. <laughs> Nevertheless, sorry, we need to treat these infected uh, wounds Then what do we do? Review of literature suggests that the use of a particular antiseptic on, uh, in wound management must be subject to a risk-benefit assessment. Why? Because these antimicrobials, they are toxic. They are toxic to bacteria. But they are not only toxic to bacteria. The toxicity is not selective. They will be toxic to human skill cells and freshly formed human skin cells freshly formed in the wound healing process, these cells will also be killed by antibiotics and mainly by topical antimicrobials. Another complication once you have established clinical infection.
antibiotics. Although there are important reasons that justify the use of an appropriate systemic then antibiotic for the treatment of uh, clinically infected wounds, their use is not justified for routine not infected or non-infected wounds. And topical antibiotics, on the other hand, are in any way not recommended. Why? Because they can provoke delayed hypersensitivity reactions, contact allergy reactions, super infection, and then, of course, most importantly, select for resistance. And this is particularly so if we would apply topically antibiotics that are also used systemically. And you find the most important ones here. Application of a topical antibiotic is in general not recommended. It is certainly not recommended if the same antibiotic is also used systemically. Why? Because of resistance selection. Resistance has become such an important um, parameter in modern uh, medicine. Uh, we basically do not use these on wounds anymore, at least not topically. The use of antiseptics then, which give less resistance than antibiotics, is still controversial, which means you would have arguments pro and arguments contra the use of antiseptics. And the most important ones you find here against um, the use of antiseptics are their toxicity. As I said, they, will, they are toxic to bacteria, they will kill bacteria, but their selective selectivity is limited. They're also toxic to human cells, especially when they're in solution and especially when they're put on clean wounds. They, um, they will be toxic to the granulation tissue. If you put antiseptics on a black necrotic wound with a lot of a scar or, or necrotic tissue, it is less a problem because there the main aim is to remove this necrotic tissue and to prevent infection. But once your wound is clean, there is no place for the use of antiseptics on a wound. Basically, and this is also strange, antiseptic solutions have not been formulated for the use on wound tissue. They've all been formulated for intact skin. And why is this important? Because most of these antiseptics will be inactivated by blood and proteins in the wound exudate, which of course on an intact skin is not taking place. And then there is of course this problem of biofilm formation. Bacteria in biofilms will be protected from the action of these antimicrobials, both antibiotics and antiseptics of 